It smells bad all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Okay. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Raycon. Raycon has been protecting people from the dangling stem since 1942. <laughs> Today, we are embarking on the quest to find out how much voltage an alternator can produce when it is spun up at how fast? I mean, I assume at 60,000 PSI, it'll spin at one RPM per PSI. So 60,000 RPM. <laughs> math, the math checks out. Yeah. And we will be using this, a water jet, to spin it up to that speed, which runs at 60,000 PSI. We have all the pieces. Yep, we got it. And this is our setup. This is my science fair project. So the water jet's gonna come in and spin at warp speed. We've got a voltmeter to see how much volt, volt juice we're making. A horn, so we'll hear the horn first. And then we've got it set up so later we can hook up the headlights and see if it can get like really loud or explode. I don't know what horns do. <laughs> Maybe the light bulbs will explode. We're gonna get to that. So this all is the, uh, the creation of Anthony. Don't blame me for that. <laughs> this is... This is terrible. But we'll all agree that this is super janky. <laughs> yeah, we just, uh, you know, this is the doot doot. So we got our doot hooked up. This is our common ground here. Um, and this is our common power here. Which connects to the positive post on the alternator slash generator. It's a 6 volt alternator. And where... these are... 12 volt? 12 volt items. So we're hoping that we can spin it up fast enough to generate more than the six volts it's rated for and make Either... it horny in here. <laughs> Should we start it at low pressure first? Nope. Send it. Just send it in case it just like explodes? <laughs> just send it. Just... <laughs> Are you silly? Okay. We're going in full pressure then. Okay, we've made a few changes. We've placed a board in here to minimize sloshiness. And we have now plugged in one of the headlights because a, it's too loud, you can't hear the horn. If it is working, we should be able to see some kind of light. Speaking of headphone warning, did you know you don't have to spend a ton of money for premium wireless audio? Raycon offers just that at just half the price of other leading brands. I've tried a lot of other wireless headphone brands and the thing I like best about Raycon is they're comfortable. I can wear them for the entire six hour battery life and they don't make my ears feel weird and I don't have to feel like I have to give my ears a break. Both Mitchell and I have the E25s, which is their latest and best model. They have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and more bass. Thick bass. On a more serious note, Raycon saves you from the dangling stem epidemic. I used to have danglers. Everyone made fun of me. Just when I thought there was nothing I could do, Raycon came about, and now I get to listen to their quality sound for six hours at a time. They're so comfortable. No one ever tells me. No one can tell me I'm wrong anymore. I love myself. Click on the link in the description to get 15% off your order, or you can go to buyraycon.com slash waterjet. Again, that's for 15% off your order. Okay, so this is gonna be one of those videos where you're gonna learn something, because we just learned a lot about alternators. Science. So none of this was working. We have a six volt alternator 
that does not have an internal regulator, so theoretically it should be able to generate more voltage than six volts, but we couldn't get it to go past like 0.93. Yeah, it wouldn't do it. All we had hooked up here was our positive post and then the ground going to our very janky terminals here. This one's positive, this one's negative. You can tell by the, the way that they are. It turns out alternators don't have permanent magnets inside of them. Which is the difference between a generator and an alternator. I so, guess a generator can do its own thing. Alternators have to have some kind of a jump start signal to get the magnets going. That is what this post is right here that is labeled field, which is for field generator, right? That generates a magnetic field using the battery. So it's like electromagnets in there that then as the coils in the motor spin generates a current uh, through the other wires. So we didn't have the electromagnet, so it's just spinning freely. Now we have some additional wires hooked up here which are going to a six volt battery on that table. It only has about four or five volts in it, but that's enough. What we're gonna see happens, I guess now, is the alternator is gonna generate, start generating power and try to run our horn and our lights. But it also, we aren't gonna be able to keep the battery on it, so it's gonna still have to generate its own electric magnetic signal. We don't wanna blow the battery. Or blow ourselves up. Yeah. So and basically- so That's what this loop is right here, that once the alternator is going and it's starting to create its own electricity. We disconnect the battery over there and this wire here will allow the alternator to feed itself power to the field post. But because all of this stuff operates, these are all 12 volt items and this is a six volt, this thing already has to work twice as hard just to spin, just to get these to operate normally. So we figure, you know, since it's 60,000 PSI water jet pressure, we're gonna spin this thing up pretty heavy. So we're hoping the water jet can keep, keep this spinning through the load that it's gonna be generating and also spin it fast enough to get everything to work. So in that clip, it might be too hard to tell in the video, but the the noise that this was making when it was running was a lot lower, which means I think it was running under a lot more load and like half speed it was when we weren't producing any voltage. And it was operating everything really well. And I mean, we capped at like nine volts, I think. Yeah, we were, what it was. The, mo the important thing to think about though is, is that the alternator was powering itself. So it was generating enough power to run its own magnetic field and keep working running the horn because which, we disconnected the battery after the first like as soon as we saw light start coming out of there we disconnected the battery so yeah. it was it was self-sustaining at that point so yeah because we don't want to cause damage to a battery or anything like that so you could see that we were running in the video probably like a constant eight or nine volts which is pretty pretty incredible that that was spinning that fast and that's why you hear it making such a hard noise is because this is working so hard that it's just brrr, like loaded down. You remember from the first time we ran this, before we had the field post hooked up, we were generating like 0.9 volts. So we have our jumper wire in so that the alternator can feed its own field generator. Is that 0.9 volts enough to get to kickstart the alternator without having the battery hooked up? Like stuff we've talked about. Oh my it's goodness. Like, what happened? The glass just exploded on that. Uh oh. I'm not gonna say it's just full of glass in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this one it just popped the filament. We slowed down the video footage of what happened here, and essentially what happened was is once this kicked off, <laughs> the multimeter couldn't even keep up with the amount of voltage that it put out. It kind of it, it maxed out. It like ghosted itself for a split second, and right when that was happening. 
these exploded. So we've got the alternator turned up now to the next high setting so that we can read a higher voltage. And we're out of headlights. We're out of headlights, but let's just see what kind of voltage that, that shows. So initially it just spiked straight up to it looked like just over 20 volts, which is why the meter was maxing out on the other setting, which blows the headlights and then the alternator, it kind of, the, the pitch of it changes after that point and it sounds like it's it's under its own load really. Yeah. Under insane load. It, it bogs itself down and that's where the multimeter kind of balances around 13, 14, 12 volts. Kind 13, of an, 14, 12. Yeah. yeah, 13, 14, 12, because that's how people count. So for those crunching the numbers <clears throat> on their pad of paper, we take 480 volts at 75 amps, and we converted it to 20 volts peak DC. Does the math check out? I, I think we did it. We nailed it. <laughs>